Jing Liu and her light cone. Very easily, mind you. Uh, won the 50-50 twice. Problem is, I have no idea how to build Jing Liu. So I'm going to go to my favorite channel, Braxophone, and see what my boy has to say. What, what, what am I doing wrong here? 1946, the yep. bubonic plague epidemic began, and it was estimated- Am I on the wrong video? Oh. Okay, no, it was the right video. Okay, all right, let's, let's keep going here, man. Needed to kill off 30 to 50 percent of Europe. It was truly disastrous. What and is happening? Incredible problems for infrastructure, population, economy, and every other facet of a functioning society. Uh -huh. After all, it had the highest casualty count of any epidemic, which comes second only to the amount of bank accounts destroyed by Jing Lu's banner. Oh my God! Hey, hey! <clears throat> Not mine. What? What do you mean? You just you just do one ten pull and then you get her. I don't get it. My hey, my bank account's fine, boy. I haven't spent a dollar on this damn game. The hell? You jerk off. Yeah, I jerk off. Yeah. Ding Liu has come and so have I. The newest Go! ice destruction unit is like Little Caesar's pizza, hot and ready to destroy you. And because I'm down horrendous for this character, we went a yes, little sir! extra hard to theorycraft the best stats and teams and tips for you guys. So if you find this video helpful, let me know by liking and consider subscribing to the channel. We're almost to a. You know what's crazy? Now that I have Jing Liu and her light cone, all these numbers that I see people hitting for on YouTube, guys, I'm hitting them too. And I'm not going to lie, it feels incredible. Quarter of a million subscribers, which is a huge personal milestone for me, and it means a lot. With all that said, my name is Braxophone, and let's talk about Jing Liu. I would love to. Holy shit, bro, you're waffling. the highest damaging attacks in the entire game. Yes, like, sir. Literally, look how high up she is. She also has some of the highest damaging attacks in the game. Up there with other strong damage dealers. And don't worry for those of you who... I just realized not only did I kill Yang Jing on my account, I also killed a Zeal on my account because I will never be using either of them ever again. I'm hoping I still find a scenario where I use Zeela. I just have no idea where that's going to be. Just pulled Don Hung. She's not power creeping him. Unless by power creep, you mean using more than two fingers. First off for Jing Liu, your basic attack is useless. Erase it from your nice. memory like the right and beta interaction. Your skill is your main source of damage on nice. her and you're going to use it every single turn. Okay. The main reason is because every time you use Jing Liu's skill, she gains a stack of sis sis Yep. When she has two syphilis stacks, she goes into her enhanced state, where she can only use her skill, and every time she does, the following will happen. She will not consume a skill point, she will use a stack, she will steal some HP from your team and convert it to attack, and she will go sicko mode. When entering yes, Sinistee, sir! she gains an absurd amount of crit rate, gets her next action move forward by 100%, and with her major That shit is broken races she will also get an that's why i'm wondering why people run her on speed like why would i not just want to run her slow like run slow Jing Liu with attack percent boots and then use my brony to boost her forward. I don't get why people were saying run speed boost. Bolt damage bonus and a huge effect resistance buff. Also, when mommy is in her enhanced state, her skill gives 30 energy on use, but without it, her skill actually gives 20 energy. So basically you're getting less energy than normal when you're not in that state. Yep. And because of that and her ultimate costing 140 energy, it can feel pretty expensive. Her yep. ultimate is called Floor Ephemeral Dream Flux, which I think is Spanish for God, I wish that were me on the other side. When you use your ultimate, it, you gain a stack of stacks. And it can actually be tempting to use her ult to get the state up. But as my mom used to always say when I asked to be let out nope. of my cage, no. You get so many buffs when you're in Sisyphus. I'm pretty sure when I was in Syphilis, before I was in Syphilis, before I had Syphilis, my ult hit for like 40k. And then after I got Syphilis, I hit for like 160,000. There is no way in f you would ever want to ult to get your state back up. That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. That's like saying I want to blow up a bomb. That way... Well, you know what? Either way, there's pretty much no reason to ever do that. So yeah, the point remains. There's no reason to ever do that. State that it's a big damage loss to ult before you're in it. Unless you see the opportunity to clean up a wave early and save some cycles. Even if you over cap on energy by using another skill, it can be worth it to save that ultimate if it won't secure a wave clear. Also, just True. as a small tip, if you use your ultimate right after you use your last stack for her skill, you can actually still keep the state up as long as your turn hasn't ended. So it's worth keeping that in mind, especially so you don't over cap on energy. Lastly, her 
other major traits will give you 10% action forward on every skill, which is nice for more drawn out fights. She also gets speed in her traces, so because she's blue and she's fast, she's basically confirmed to be a Sonic the Hedgehog XP. And her technique is going to be something you want to use at every opportunity, since she's not required to be on field for it to work. It'll freeze anything it comes in contact with and start jingling. I'm going to be using that for killing wave after wave after wave of innocent piglings. With a stack Dude, Jingli Yu with inhibitors, their abilities are going to slaughter pigs. Forget basic attack exists. Just completely wipe it from your memory. Max okay. everything else because she's your new main. Destruction okay. units are incredibly strong, especially with the three target scenarios we keep seeing in Memory of Chaos. Yes, sir. With her HP drain, Jinglu is kind of like Blade, if Blade could make me come. But unlike Blade, she lacks the self-sustain. So I'll go over details on how to fix that in the team section. But for now, let's talk about her best build let's do it man please don't say the quantum set please do not say the quantum set since you're never using another damage dealer again, you're probably ready to go all in with your Trailblaze power. And with yep. Jinglu, you have a few different options when it comes to maxing her out. Though she's the hottest character in Honkai Star Rail, Jinglu still well, is an ice unit. For four piece sets, let me make one thing perfectly clear. Jingli is in my top three. She's not hotter than Kafka, okay? And I'm not letting my recency bias take that away. I am still loyal to Kafka. I'm just gonna say it. You're mainly looking for the Glacial Frost set or the Genius of Brilliant Stars set. Glacial Frost is the better general use set for her since it's yep. going to give crit damage after using her ultimate and ice damage on the two piece. It's the fucking ice set. Who else is it gonna be good on other than ice characters? But with right? that said, there's Imagine only two that. ice DPS in the game. No, your DPS payload does not count. And there's not really characters in the game that want the wind set anymore. Anymore since the speed set was released and doesn't that make it so miserable to farm 50 percent of the relics that you get from the wind and ice dungeon are useless it is so miserable like it is miserable it is miserable so you can opt for something that's within similar damage like the quantum set jinglu has a ton of attack stats already and the quantum set will let her ignore some defense on enemies especially if they have quantum weakness most dps in the game can use the quantum set for the four piece effect and if you have one already you don't need to farm more and i'm sure if you don't have one already you've at least been trying to work on getting your seal at a 70 crit rate between the two four piece sets you can choose the one with the better sub stats personally Stop, I found the bro, four -piece why? Set for about three wait can i do that right now Wait, can I can I can I strip my Zilla? If I were to strip my Zilla, would it actually be good? I would have speed and crit damage, and then I would have six point one percent, sixteen point eighteen percent crit damage, and then I would have speed and crit rate, and then I would have oh, just about the worst body I've ever seen. Unless I were to max this crit damage chest. Okay, let's say hypothetically I were to roll this. To nine for fun. This is so bad. This is just this is just so bad. It's so bad. Speed. Oh my god, I hate my life. Alright, Brock, just keep talking, man. I'm so depressed months because I'm mentally ill. For planar sets, Rudolent Arena is going to be best. For some reason, there's this misconception going around that Rudolent Arena doesn't work with crit rate stat changes. It actually does, but only if those stat changes would be reflected on the stat screen for the character. In Jinglu's case, she gets an absurd crit rate buff when she yep. goes into her sussy state, which can activate Rudolent's effect. You may not have 100% uptime on Rudolent, but the effect is so strong that it yeah, ends up being good. the best choice anyways. But for other options, you can go with Space Ceiling Station Thank or God. Photo, whichever has better sub stats wait i can go space ceiling and it's fine no way wait i have so much space ceiling yo 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 wait do i have ice damage hold up do i have ice damage here or no ice damage bad could be good bad bad yo crit damage Crit damage and I 15 you. Crit damage and I 15 you. Crit damage and I 15. <laughs> oh, it's so the press. Okay, okay. For Jinglu, you're going to want crit damage on her chest, speed or attack on her boots, ice damage sphere, and an attack percent. Why would I you're want speed on You're likely not going boots. to need crit rate as a main stat since she gets such high crit rate buffs. So damage is the way to go. Since most of her damage is in her Sasuke state, you're going to want more attacks off to have more opportunities to that activate makes sense. it and also generate more energy. So having a high speed stat wins okay. by a pretty decent margin here. But attack okay, boots are fine if you don't really have good speed boots for now. 
I'm assuming if you run Bronya, it's probably fine to go attack boots too. Ice damage sphere makes sense because she does ice damage. And yep. because she sucks your friendly HP and her max amount is based on her attack, an attack rope gives her more damage and a higher buff cap. For substats, I recommend getting speed to 134 or 147. Hey, first. hey, I will stick to 121 and you will like that, okay? Because I can't just get to 147 speed. Then, assuming you already have enough crit rate, focus on crit damage and attack percent. I don't. I'd say break effect, but ice break is kind of a joke, so. As always, here's a build summary and enjoy the next, like, 5 to 10 seconds of music or something. Hey, thanks, man. Crit rate to 40. I will be at 37.1 and you're going to enjoy that, okay? I don't need any more than that. It's fine. What, 37's enough. It's enough. Holy f this is gonna make me cry, bro. Jesus. I'm gonna go like, comment, if you're subscribe like me, to Brax you right now. You probably already know what weapon Jingling wants. Miss Splitter Reforged is one of the <laughs> obvious. Shut up. Oh, bro. Gee. Bro, chill the hell out with this shit. Bro. So your signature light cone is going to be best in slide. Uh, I got it. It's the best looking light cone in the entire game on the best looking character in the entire game. Okay, you actually don't need it, but it's pretty. Yes, you do. This is one that you do need. No, you don't. Okay, I need to stop. You don't need it. I got Good. it. Some of the best premium light cones are I Shall Be My Own Sword for its crit damage, damage bonus, and Insane. defense ignore. Brighter Insane. Than the Sun for its crit rate and attack percent. The Unreachable Side Insane. for its crit rate and damage bonus. And something irreplaceable for its stat bonus. Yeah, so just get one of those five-star light cones. Brax, just show the goddamn four stars, okay? If people had those light cones, they wouldn't be pulling up the guide. Just show the damn four stars. Bonuses. But a secret vow. Thank you. At high superimposition is fantastic for the damage bonus it gives. And with under the blue skies passive up at S5, it can be even better than a lot of the five star light cones. For free to play players, you'll most likely want to use on the fall of an Aeon from her to shop. And it See, me missing six weeks of progress is the reason why I pulled for her light cone. Because I could have just bought that and I would have been happy with it. But unfortunately, I had the great misclick. And we finally fixed it, boys. It can actually be competitive and even better than some of the other premium five-star light cones, depending on your stats, talent levels, and the content that you're in. If that one's on Mr. Dill, though, you can use the most welcome you under the blue sky or a secret vow at a lower superimposition or worst case scenario, collapsing sky at S5. This Yikes! Despite the fact that you and I would become dogs just to be in Jinglu's presence, Wolf Walk Time is actually not good on her. Like, that. <laughs> here's some damage comparisons of light cones based on some simulations. Keep oh in mind, my for God. different simulated scenarios, other light cones could pull ahead or fall behind. So take everything with a grain of salt. The other important thing to max Jinglu's damage is to build her. You know what's crazy? It's really not that big of a difference with the light cone. It's really not. Like, okay, so I would have run a Secret Vow S1. I would have been doing, yeah, like 20% less damage. I think that's actually fun. I feel like if you don't have it, I actually think that it's fine. I mean, I think this is a good graph showing you exactly that you truly, truly, truly don't need it. Right? Like, you truly don't need it. Like, do it if you want to, but you don't need it. A solid team. So, let's talk about the 20% is crazy. Yeah, 20% is crazy, but it's not necessary. What's next? Welcome to the team section of the Jinglu guide. Now, if you're hyper fixated on the Jinglu C, I have some good news for you, even if you're a free to play player. This character, though she does work incredibly well with some premium units, there's a couple units that are basically like must haves for her, but Pela. they're all four stars. So let's talk about some of the premium options. Pela, and some of the more free to play friendly options. I'll go over everything. And for those of you who don't have Silver Wolf, uh, I, I tried to make this video more uh, digestible for you. I, I'm going to do a hot take, and uh, I've been saying this since day one. No, I haven't. That's a lie. Silver Wolf, you don't need her. When her rerun ban happens, and it will, we're going to get a Silver Wolf rerun banner eventually. Uh, you really just don't need her. She's a character that'll carry you for a little bit, but she's going to fall off harder than Anvil off a cliff. Okay? Or my analytics when I quit Genshin Impact. You don't need her. Just build a Pela. Okay, Pela is better than Silver Wolf, and I'm going to stand by that. Okay, because Pela is AOE 42% defense ignore. You just you just get rid of it. 42% defense strip. It is ridiculous. Silver Wolf excels at making bad new accounts better, right? But once you can cover elemental advantage, 
uh, at every stage, then you'll never need Silver Wolf. And eventually, you will get to that point. You will. You will get to a point to where you have enough characters to put the square block in the square hole, or aka the fire block in the fire hole. You will eventually get there. You really do not need Silver Wolf at all. Just use your Pela. You can call me Coat, but the longer and longer, the longer and longer the game is out, the more and more Pela will rise and Silver Wolf will fall. And if you don't believe me, it's already starting to happen. Pela is only one spot down on single target. And three targets, she's the same as Silver Wolf. And boys, for AoE, she's better than Silver Wolf. It's really not that big of a deal. You don't need Silver Wolf. You just use Pela. It is what it is, and you're done. It's fine but you should pull for Silver Wolf. Okay, so the first team, I know I said I would talk about some free-to-play friendly stuff, but we still got four more teams here, so just hear me out. Listen up. I'm going to talk about what's optimal and then free-to-play friendly stuff. First off, I want to talk about her HP consumption. One thing yep. that you're going to have to deal with with Jinglu teams is sustainability. Is It's going to be tough. 4% gone on your teammate's max HP is going to add up a lot. It's going to feel Not really if you bad use Blue over Ultra. time. And mostly, the biggest reason for that is actually because it's taking from your whole team. If it was taking 16% from one unit every turn, that wouldn't be so bad, but because it hits every single character, you basically need to have AoE heals to keep up. Yeah, and but that's cool. why Locha is actually probably the best pairing in the game for her in Good. terms of supports. I have it. Locha and not like any other character that has AoE healing is because Locha overheals so much, he does. it actually is ridiculous. It I know is. in my guide for Locha, I said you don't actually need the overhealing. In Jinglu's case, the overhealing can be really super clutch. It's because nice. Locha has it so when his Abyss Flower field is active whenever you attack with any one of these characters you're going to gain hp back to everyone assuming you have they made them oh, oh first of all that eye is so beautiful they made them op together because they're together in the story guys Imagine that lore accurate team comps. Have all his traces unlocked. And when you have that in effect, you can basically nullify the amount of HP that she's draining by healing it all back with Locha instantly upon attacks of your other characters. Yep. And that Just is just like Bronya and Zilla, guys. A useful utility for you because when you're getting attacked by three or four enemies and they're all attacking your Tingyun all at once, that means that <laughs> you're not gonna have to worry about spot healing any of the other characters on your team. You only have to focus on the You know what's crazy? Maybe I'm nuts here. My Ting Yun really doesn't have increased aggro. I don't know. I've never had a problem with my Ting Yun at all. Like, just run her on one HP piece and it really doesn't matter. The one character that's getting really, really unlucky because he's going to naturally bring everyone back. Trust me, I tested this with Lynx. I thought Lynx would be a super great healer for Jinglu, and she is, but she cannot really solo sustain in some of the hardest content. Or she can, but you have to get really lucky with the enemy's targeting. Lynx can give Jinglu a little bit of a ton, and as a destruction unit, she does have a little bit of chunkier HP, which is super nice. And the heal over time from Lynx does somewhat counteract Jinglu, but you are nice. going to struggle with Lynx. You're going to struggle with the time you're going to struggle with Bailu even. Oh, actually, especially Bailu, because Bailu's got the random healing. Even if it is... Wait, Jingliu kills your team that much that you have to run her with Luocha? There's no way. Bounce, you could just miss one character entirely. It is possible to solo sustain, but Locha really is a game changer for Jinglu's self-sustainability. He's the only character that I've been able to consistently self-sustain with. Fushuan, you can if it doesn't last too long, but in terms of like really good consistency, Locha is definitely the way to go. Now okay, so Luocha for lower end free-to-play players, Fushuan, Jingliu for like OP is zero cycle clears okay i get it now i want to talk about jinglu's other best partner for a support and that's going to be bronya yes Rocha is going to be what you need to survive bronya is going to be what you need to make jinglu deal like an absurd yes, sir. amount of damage the thing is jinglu gets into her state after she gets yes, sir. stacks of you already you know what i'm talking about and bronya allows you to essentially instantly get that state you can skill with jinglu and then you can use bronya's skill bring jinglu up and skill again and boom you instantly have that state active and then you get another attack with jinglu and then you go again, and then, you and then you all, and then you go again. Buff. If you're at the start of the fight, you definitely have your ultimate, and you, you just get so much damage out of Bronya's buffs, and yes, sir. out of Jinglu just being able to get into that state more. This is going to be our team. And the last character I want to talk about is Pela. Now, lucky for you, Pela has been on every banner since this game. <laughs> She literally has been on every single damn banner, bro. If you don't have an E6 Pela at this point, what in the hell are you doing? Like, I literally can't imagine. Like, like, imagine being the player with an E6 Pela who hasn't built her yet, not knowing she's, like, one of the best characters in the whole game. Uh, like I predicted since before the game even launched, by the way. Uh, AoE defense break. Who would have predicted they would have been...
Pe- oh yeah, the guy who plays Summoner War and uses Galleon. This character is so goddamn good. Dude, just build her on full tank. Dude, my Pela build is ridiculous. If you have not built her, you really should. It's really easy. You can use her pretty much on anything. Like, just literally, you want to hit two substats, okay? This is it. You want to hit, like... Near a thousand defense, above 3.2k HP, and above 134 speed. That's pretty much all you f- need. Use the event light cone that they already gave us, which is her best in slot. That'll give you the effect hit rate that you need. She's so easy to build. Dude, I will sing the praise of Fela from here until the end of time. She's so damn good. Just use her, bro launched and never missed a single one this is probably like the most commonly owned character i wouldn't be surprised if more people had pala on their account yep. than had the actual trailblazer i actually yep. prefer pala to silver wolf in a lot of scenarios where you would Same. actually play jinglu because jinglu is an aoe destruction unit though yep. she can deal some pretty high single target damage you're gonna bring her to something that has multiple enemies in it and pala having that defense shred on multiple enemies is great and she's a tight match for jinglu so if you're yes, gonna break ice weakness on enemies pala jinglu can be a solid combo that's not to say silver wolf is bad silver wolf is actually still incredibly good but it's just that you know if you're already against ice weak enemies you can just bring pela instead for the aoe defense shred and that could be pretty good so for free to play players that all have pela because there's no way you don't have pela on your account she's pretty good <laughs> the other thing to note about jing Liu is that she's not there literally super is SP no heavy, way so she does work really well with bronyo lovecha and pela i mean this generally chat type one if you actually don't have pela on your account and mods ban all the people who typed one because they're liars because Pela doesn't need to use her skill every round. Locha doesn't need to skill every round. Bronya wants to skill every time. Jingler wants to skill every time. And because she's not super skill point heavy, ultimately you can recover enough to sustain with this team. Or sustain your, your skill points. I also like how when I say Pela was OP, y'all coped at the beginning. And then now that Brax is saying it, y'all are agreeing like you've been saying this shit for forever. Bro, why is it whenever I tell y'all this shit, you always have to cap? Then when somebody else says, you're like, yeah, they're right. Bro, why can't you guys? You realize that I'm insanely good at this game, right? You realize I'm like, I mean, dude, if I was, if I were to make guides, they would probably be like, you know, at least in the top 50 guides ever made on each character, right? They'd be nuts. Speaking of sustain in HP, though, I wanted to talk a little bit about what that means if you can't solo sustain if you don't have Locha. So one thing yep. that I found is if you're against enemies that are weak to fire, uh, playing Asta is always going to be good. But good. also you can play Trailblazer. Fire Trailblazer is no. going to give you a little bit of shielding that will help keep you safe Absolutely during not. all of your battles. And no a little bit of shielding combined with Lynx's healing should help preserve you. Even I'm not doing fine. I'm not doing you're that. losing HP from Jinglu every single turn. No Asta way. Asta's just a really good pair with Jinglu because of the speed buff and the attack buff. But uh, I will say it doesn't... You know what's crazy? When he does this, nobody says bro is stalling. If I weren't to say... Build Jinglu to 80, oh, level up her artifacts, get all relic, uh, get all stats to 10 besides her auto attack, uh, get her relics at this one. If I were doing it any other way, they would say, oh, dude, take down stalling. Shut the f*** up, bro. The favoritism for everybody else but me is, is a joke. Okay, and y'all need to realize that y'all are the wafflers, not me. Good to get a massive attack buff from Asta as it does to shred enemy defense because Jinglu does get such a massive attack buff from herself. But overall, this can be pretty good. Using Fire Blazer with any sustaining unit. For example, you can play Bailu, you can play Natasha. Like I'm not any playing other Bailu. sustaining unit and Trailblazer. Together, Absolutely this can not. be like a pretty solid team. And if you have 100% Jepard uptime, then you could play another support as well. This what? one is pretty risky because basically after a certain amount of attacks with Jinglu, you're going to be really hurt for HP and if, the fight, if a fight drags out too long like in simulated universe or something yep. and you don't have that healing that's gonna suck so yeah, I do die. still recommend a healer but Japard also being ice alongside Jing Liu and also just being such a monster of a unit uh, he can be good here uh, guys the team that I recommend is uh, Jing Liu Fu Xuan Luocha and Lynx uh, that way you can counteract the 4% damage she's doing every turn. I think that's the best team, me personally. And as I mentioned before, Fushuan is, is going to be amazing. So the next character I wanted to talk about is going to be Tingyun instead of Branya. Tingyun is a character that can be pretty solid with Jingnu. The only downside of Tingyun is that energy tuning for Jingnu is a little bit tough. Ow. I have found every single time I play with Tingyun, the first ult with Tingyun is very helpful to get Jingnu's ult up. But then what happens after... Did you just say... Hold up. Every single time... Bro, you needed one energy. You needed one energy. You're saying that that was very helpful? I play with Tingyun. The first ult with Tingyun is very helpful to get Jingnu's ult up. But then what happens after that is I end up desyncing Tingyun and Jingnu. So whenever I'm trying to use Jingnu's ult or use Tingyun to get Jingnu's ult faster and get an extra stack, I will have to overcap energy on Tingyun or overcap energy on Jingnu, one or the other. Ooh. And it doesn't feel super good. That's not to say Tingyun is bad. Tingyun is always going to be a super strong character with most DPS in the game that scale and attack. And she will be good with Jingnu, but I 
will say I definitely prefer Bronya. Uh, in yeah, you should just get a Bronya. Or, in my case, you should do this. You should get Bronya and you should get Bronya's light count. That, that's what you should do, guys. This certain team composition. And then as you can tell, Pela is going to be uh, your best friend here. And Locha for solo sustain as well. Speaking of solo sustain, I probably should have mentioned this somewhere in the video. But if you really want to max out Jinglu's buff and, and try to get as much attack out of it as possible, around talent level 10, that's around 3,500 team HP on What? Average, which actually isn't hard to hit. Most of your characters will be probably in that range once you have plus 15 on your headpiece and level Jesus. 15 on your character. So it's not something you have to actively think about. Uh, 3,500 HP? Okay, now, next up is a super special team with two damage dealers, a solo sustain, and Oh, that's so uh, cool. Buffer. Now, again, Blade Banner, when that comes back, I'm letting y'all know, he's coming home. I want this character so bad. Silver Wolf, I sleep. I sleep. I don't care. Blade, that's my boy if you don't have locha you can go someone like lynx and fire blazer or you can go with a, a healer and a preservation and that's totally this fine. team looks uh, but so i will cool. say with blade in particular blade has such good self-sustainability that that's one less character that you have to worry about now something you might not know is that whenever jinglu drains your friendly hp that actually gives blade a stack you can play both the jinglu and blade together and though these characters won't be buffed a ton jinglu has so many buffs on herself it doesn't really matter and blade though he won't be giga buffed still deals pretty Pretty solid damage with dude that's buffs. so it's cool not like top tier damage but he's pretty good without buffs still and with two damage dealers you can compensate for the fact that you don't have buffs on these characters if you're running Pela, you can defense shred the enemy team in aoe and both blade and jinglu are going to deal so much aoe damage you should be able to basically shred through the content plus with jinglu draining blades hp more that's more follow-up attacks from blade which is more overall blade damage and this team it, though i'm i'm not going to call it like the best team in the world it is a super fun team it looks cool it looks so sick. You really like Jinglu and you really like Blade. And using two DPS is something we haven't been able to super efficiently do before. So I really like this setup, especially because it doesn't use too many skill points. Uh, Blade only has to use one every three turns. Jinglu's going to use uh, skill points until she's interstate, and then she's not going to use skill points. Locha doesn't really need them. Pele doesn't really need them. So between these two, you can basically, you're going to be fine on skill points. Love this setup. There's two other things that I want to quickly mention uh, for team building with Jinglu because I think they're super important. So I tested solo sustain with her a lot. I really wanted solo sustain to work i wanted to see if you just over invest in your healer uh, if so if solo sustaining was something you could do and it is just so inconsistent in the higher level content in lower level content it's not going to matter but you know if you just get unlucky once on a character you're going to really struggle to keep them alive well a character that actually helps you sustain Oof. is welt welt is a character what? that can imprison enemies make them slower and make them attack less frequently and if you build effect hit rate huh? on or even you can just build them dps and hope that you get some imprisons off of your ultimate because it already has a high base chance you can you can can solo sustain with this pretty reliably i did run some things with welt and then links or welt and oh so healer, you slow them down so your sustainer has team. more Just time to heal the enemies aren't able to attack me as frequently meaning that I'm well welt is the character the i was gonna get regardless of my 300 I exactly when i need to on the heal and i don't have to worry about getting super unlucky quadruple target on, on my ting or something like that and so well he's so Cool. clutch for me with Jinglu and I don't think enough people are going to talk about this character as a as a way to still add more damage to your team while not running an abundance and a preservation or two abundance characters. Welt is super great for that. And now I also want to just talk about Yukong because Yukong is a character that Jinglu can technically take advantage of if you're going into her state. If you basically have one stack of Sussy Baka. You can basically use Yukong's skill, use her skill, go into that state, ultimate, and then skill again with her because she has the advantage forward when no, she absolutely goes not. the reason why i don't like using yukong is because she needs way too many eidolons as a four-star character like yukong without e6 feels miserable and maybe one day i'll get lucky as shit and i'll have that but right now i don't and I'd rather just use Pela. And she'll be able to use all of Yukong's buffs. She'll get two turns in a row, and she'll get both of those turns with Yukong's crit damage and attack buff. The only downside to this, though, is that the crit rate from Yukong is basically useless. Yep. You're going to struggle to not go over 100 crit rate on Jinglu. And so, like, part of Yukong's buff just literally does nothing. But with that set of your against imaginary weak enemies, and you have, like, Locha or something, so you have your two imaginary characters, speed tuning Yukong to be in front of Jinglu, it'll only work sometimes because of our advanced forward. But if you are speedrunning content, 
content, if you're doing like a one or two wave clear, zero cycle clear even, you could make sure that Yukon goes first and you get both of Jinglu's skills inside of that window. So it's just something to think about. I don't prefer to use Yukon with her, but you can use her. Yeah, don't. It's, it's an option. And then the don't. last thing Absolutely is not. going to be the 2-2 two -two setup with uh, Lynx Fushuan and then Jinglu Pela. Now, because Fushuan can solo sustain, I'm going to recommend this to you. Your favorite quantum unit that you see in every single team guide. Oh, so wow. I put Lynx and Fushuan in there because I wanted to be extra safe with sustainability. But if you find wow. that you can solo sustain with Fushuan, using Silver Wolf here is super awesome because you can either implant ice or you can implant quantum weakness. You're going to have so much defense shred. Jinglu is an absolute... No. Awesome well, bro, she's been a ton of damage, and altogether these teams, you don't or, need sorry, her. These characters work super well. You together. really, you Next really up, don't I'll need go her. Guys. Talk about Eidolon, so that way you guys know uh, why you should swipe on her. The answer is because she's really hot. But if you want like more logical reasoning and Eidolons versus Light Cone, keep watching. That's up next. Should I pull for one Eidolon? I could just pick up E1 and get crit damage increased by 24%. Should I pick it up real quick? E1 is so good. Yeah, so saving $300. Something that sets Jinglu apart from other Honkai Star Rail characters is that she doesn't actually have a garter on her leg. That has nothing to do with anything else. It's just a fun bag. As usual, don't spend money on this game to clear the content since you can do True. it free to play. But I True. will go over her Eidolons so that way you have a better idea of what they do. Jinglu's E1 is basically a blanket buff that gives her 24% crit damage whenever she uses her ultimate or enhanced skill. That 24% crit God, damage. God, I wish that was baseline, turn, dude. Nice Son of a bitch. Overall. The second half of Eidolon 1, though, is what makes it pretty good because it essentially buffs her in single target, making her feel more like a hunt unit. To be completely transparent with you guys, I wish that she would hunt and destroy me, and I would be her single target. I also want to feel 100% of her attack. E2 gives her more damage on her next enhanced skill after using her ultimate. The buff is 80% damage bonus, but it only lasts for the one skill, so overall, it's not a massive damage jump. E3 is a buff to her ultimate and talent, which it's honestly kind of mid. E4 is a buff to her attack gain based on her team's HP drain. It ends you don't up being need a similar amount of damage gain to either on two and three, you need none so of this it's not something that you need e5 is going to level up her guys remember each eidolon is generally going to cost you an extra two to three hundred dollars per you don't need them skill which is massive but also her basic attack which doesn't actually exist for e6 she gains an extra stack whenever she enters her enhanced state as well as a 50 percent crit damage bonus for the don't entire duration of the state it's a solid damage jump and it actually buffs e1 as well since she'll get an extra enhanced attack which can help her single target damage even more ultimately though i wish that i were her and she were those hands here's what you can expect oh bro her titties are out in e6 though oh Oh, that's so pain. To see in terms of damage gains from Eidolons on her. Pretty standard stuff. Damn, bro. If you're unsure of whether or not her light cone nah, is over that. her Eidolons, the answer is forfeit, forfit all mortal possessions. No. Nope. Do not. Jingle's light cone is more worth the pickup in my opinion because yes, the damage sir. gain from it compared to the fall of an Aeon is pretty decent, but more importantly, it's very pretty and you can use it on any destruction character smile. Your priority for Jingle wow, should be that's Rana, so cool. light cone, and then Eidolons. Though I wanted to spend more time making this video longer and more in depth, I've been sick with a sore throat for about two weeks, so I'm going to cut the outro short. Tell me who your favorite character in Star Rail is and why it's Jinglu, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Have a good Dude, day. Dude, Brax always makes banger videos. My takeaway is you build Jing Liu whatever way you want to build it. You can probably still crush the content if you grind for like six months in the game. Yeah, 134 speed seems about right. Probably use a secret valve. That's probably the light cone that you have. Or use the one from the herd of shop. That's the one that I'd recommend. And then you just press buttons. Use her with Bronya and Locha and win the game. Or if you don't have Bronya, then just use her with Pela. Easy. And then use your fire trailblazer and links. Easy. It's, just, it's really that simple. Your game's not hard. If I can beat it, anybody can. I mean, think about it, guys. I'm dumb as shit, right? Right? So if I beat it and you guys call me stupid, then what's your excuse? I have spent zero dollars. What about no Luocha? Uh, don't worry. The new Luocha, better. it's coming back, guys. Don't worry. So just go ahead and pull that. <laughs> if you would like to see Jing Liu in action, check out my stream at twitch.tv forward slash techdown and make sure to subscribe to Braxifone for all those great videos. Good shit, buddy.